I am doing an upgrade to fiber. This baby here. Well, not actually this actual cable. This one's a little bit too long. This is three meters long enough. Bought some other ones to reduce the uh, length. But I'm upgrading to fiber. You might be thinking, well, if you've already upgraded to 10 gigabit ethernet cable, why do you need fiber? Well, the problem with one of these is they do produce a lot of heat. Well, not the actual cable, but some of the components that the cable has to go in gets very hot. So it's producing a lot of heat. In fact, it gets so hot, it's very difficult to actually touch the end of it. That's how hot it gets. So you're wasting energy. Whereas if you use something like fibre, it's just the light going through. And it's quite energy efficient. And it works extremely well. In fact, it works as good as this if not better because it has one advantage over this the advantage for this is the fact that you can do longer runs it can be done over a longer distance than say using this that's why industry say for instance your internet provider will be using fiber or optical yeah makes sense so i am going over to optical and i've never done this before but if you wish to know which parts you need, then carry on watching this video. And also, as always, I will stick links in the video description. They are affiliated links on all the components that you need to do what I'm gonna do. Now, I am actually doing it to two PCs, but for this little demonstration to start with, I am gonna show you just the components that you need for one computer, okay? Now, something else to bear in mind before we get going, this will not speed up your internet. It has nothing to do with internet. This is internal networking. You know, from room to room or wherever you're doing it. I'm doing it from PC to actual switch. And also, I'm going to be trying out PC to PC. It should work, but like I said, I've never tried it. I don't know if I have to do any reconfigurations, but I don't think I do. But if it doesn't work, then we do from PC to switch, from switch to PC. I know that does work. <laughs> so uh, with that, let's get on with the actual parts list and then we can start putting it all together. To start with, you will need this. This is a two pack 10 gigabit SFP plus transceiver. Let me just quickly show you. So you get two in this pack. You need one to go in the switch and you need one to go into your PC. Yeah, makes sense. So you need one of them. Don't get linked in the video description in case you need to uh, check them out. This is an LC to LC fiber patch cable, and this one is one meter long. You need one of them. Make sure you're getting the right length for wherever you're putting it. There's no point in you getting one that's too short because you can't make it longer. You'll have to buy another one. You will need one of these. This is a 10 gigabit PCI Express times eight LAN adapter. There's something to bear in mind. If you've only got a times four PCI Express connection, don't use it because you won't get the full benefits of something like this. It will still run, it just won't get all the benefits, all right? So something to bear in mind. So you need one of these. You obviously need a PC. I assumed that was obvious to you. <laughs> I might have assumed wrongly, <laughs> but you will need that. And also, you will need a 10 gigabit E SFP plus switch, managed or unmanaged. I have the unmanaged version because the other one was a little bit dearer. And I thought, do I really want to mess about with managed switches? Not at the moment, but maybe in a future video. Yeah. So, like I said earlier, I've already done Ethernet 10 gigabit using cable. And that goes into there. Like so. Voila. And that, it's just cooling down now, is quite hot, believe me, it's very hot. I'm going to take this off. Like that. Job done. So, I'm doing this to two PCs, not just to one. So, I'm going to put one of these that does fibre into there, and another one into there. Now, these are your normal standard network cables, the ones I just showed you. These little babies, see? RJ45 connections, okay? They're your standards. That will not go in now without an adapter. 
I will stick a link in the video description for this as well, just in case you don't want to go down the fibre route and you want to stick to Ethernet. If you do stick with Ethernet, I recommend you use Cat 6 or above, depending on your length of cabling. Okay? So, like I said, I'm going fibre. <laughs> and one day I want to do more fibre because I think it'd be a lot better. The only downside with fibre is, as far as I understand at the moment, it's very difficult to cut the cable to your length. So for instance, I've got a two meter cable, but I only want to use one and a half meters. I'd have to buy it at one and a half meters because I haven't got the tools to make it. And as far as I know, they're quite expensive to buy, as far as I know. So this is the switch I'm using, it's a QNAP. It has four at 2.5 gigabit ethernet connection, standard RJ45 connection, four of them and two 10 gigabit connection using either fiber or ethernet depending on you know your setup so what you need to do is get one of these out i'll get two out and basically you push that into there like so and it makes a click and then this one into there makes a click take these off these are just covers to protect the actual connections now like i said earlier i've already done an upgrade to 10 gig and i will stick a link in the video description or at the end of this video or even up here somewhere in case you want to go and see that video it's a bit long but you might enjoy it so with that i'm all ready to go i'm going to read out all the specs of the actual pieces that i've actually got and while i'm doing that i'm going to be Installing the actual cards themselves into both PCs, by the way, not just one PC, but in both. Let's get on with it, shall we? I know I said I was going to run a speed test through PC to PC without going through the switch. Well, I've had to give that one a miss because for whatever reason, I set up a shared folder on both PCs so that they could, you know, connect easily. And I turned off the passwords and it's still asking for username and password. So I thought, oh, I can't be bothered with doing that. So what I've done instead is connect them to the switch. And let the switch sort it out and that seems to be working fine now i run open speed test and i run it on two computers i run it on my main computer and my backup computer so i run a speed test from my main computer to my backup computer going through the actual switch and vice versa and it did surprise me a little bit because 
I was expecting them to come up roughly about the same speed, and there wasn't. So one had a very good download speed, and the other one had a very good upload speed. And I thought, well, that's a bit weird. Now, I don't know if that's to do with the switch, or whether it's to do with the transceivers, or whether it's to do with the software. Open speed test. Let me know in the comments what you think it is, because I, I don't really know what it is. Like I said, I did try it both ways, and it did vary a little bit. But I'm very pleased with it. It works. I wasn't sure if I bought everything correct. I did try it the other week with different stuff, and it didn't work properly. I've got it working, but not as intended. And now, I know my fibre does work. I'm thinking maybe, maybe in a few months' time, find a switch that is all fibre and just run fibre everywhere. That'd be amazing, wouldn't it? With that, if you like this video and you'd like to see more networking, let me know in the comments. And also, if you do want to see any more of this sort of thing, consider subscribing, clicking on the bell to get notified for when I upload my videos and give me the thumbs up. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to put a comment in the comment section as well. Thank you very much.